In today's video, I'm gonna break down my top 10 best family dog breeds. back to the canine show my name's will i'm the founder and ceo of fenrir canine products on this channel i make videos just like this one to educate people about the amazing world of our canine best friends so if this is your first time here don't forget to subscribe now recently i've been focusing a lot of guard dog different roles but today we're stepping away from that a little bit and we're going to focus on my top 10 best family dogs for if you're not concerned about security and just want the perfect companion for you and your children but what actually makes a great family dog? Well, in today's list, I'll be looking for the breeds that are gentle and loving of children, yet are robust and can take those accidental pokes and pulls that a child can do in its stride. A laid back dog that doesn't freak out at change or extreme changes in energy or excitement that a household with children has. It needs to be a dog that forms deep bonds with children and doesn't just tolerate them. One that is easy to train for the average family and is healthy and can lead a long active life with you as your family grows up. So without further ado, we'll jump straight into it with our number 10 pick. And my number 10 pick is the Pyrenees Mountain Dog. I really don't think the Pyrenees or Pyrenean Mountain Dog gets enough love. Now don't get me wrong, I do think there's better choices, but there's no way that this dog was being left off my list today. They are just a great all-round family dog, just ticking all the boxes I just discussed. They're incredibly trustworthy and gentle animals that show extreme patience and kindness with children, being very calm and relaxed animals. They love being in the home with their families and they're very intelligent, making them fairly easy to train. They do have a few negatives though, and they do include that this deep love of being with the family does make them suffer from quite severe separation anxiety, which often then will lead to destructive behaviours when left alone. They are intelligent, but as mountain dogs they do have a trait of independence which naturally subtracts from ease of training, and those coats, although absolutely beautiful, require quite extreme levels of grooming throughout the entire year. And number nine, I have the Boston Terrier. Now before I dive into the details of the Boston Terrier, I want to say at this point that I have left the English and French Bulldog off this list. They are great family dogs and I'm not one to preach and I never judge owners, but I do fall in the category personally of feeling a little uncomfortable watching just how much they struggle, especially health-wise. And friends of colleagues of mine who are vets do strongly take this viewpoint. I also know of people that love the breed, but having owned them will then actively encourage people not to have them, as the health concerns are simply through the roof. That being said, I think the Boston Terrier offers an excellent compromise. Being brassiophallic, they do have issues that come along with that, but nowhere near the extent of the English or French Bulldogs. Yet they also come packed to the brim with incredible little personalities that fit in absolutely brilliantly with families loving children, very active, and they love the outdoors, and a decent level of intelligence and trainability makes these one of my favorite in the entire smaller dog breed family. At number eight, I have the Bernese Mountain Dog. You'll find it difficult to find anyone that disagrees with the Bernese Mountain Dog being on the list of incredible family dogs. They are incredibly loyal, loving, sweet, natured, gentle dogs that have all the hallmarks of being great with children. They're not overly demanding and make a great choice for first time owners as well as family companions which many families may be in the situation of looking for both of those things. In a similar fashion to the Pyrenees Mountain Dog though, they do have very demanding grooming requirements and they do have relatively short lifespans which is heartbreaking for family dogs. Now before we jump into number seven, and as we're talking about short lifespans, I want to mention this as this topic is so close to my heart because I lost my bull mastiff at just four years old and I blame the terrible quality dog food that I fed her. Like a vast majority of owners, I didn't know how awful most food is and it's why we spent years creating Fenrir wild dog food. It's completely grain-free food based on our dog's ancestral dietary requirements made up of just proper locally sourced meat and vegetables with no artificial flavouring or preservatives that is absolutely delicious for our dogs. We only sell directly to you guys from our website at fenrirk9products.com which allows us to cut out the middleman and pass those savings on to you. 
And if you choose our subscription service, we not only deliver your food directly to your door as you need it, but we give you 25% off your first order and 10% off every order after that, as well as free delivery on every single order. You can cancel at any time, skip orders if you have too much food, bump up orders if you're running out quickly, you're in complete control. So if you're bringing one of these glorious dogs into your family, make sure you're helping ensure they live a long and healthy life by feeding them a high quality diet like Fenrir Wild Dog Food available at FenrirCanineProducts.com or you can follow the links that are all in the description box below. However, coming in at number 7 on our list, we have the Collie. I think the Collie is one of the most regal looking dogs on the entire planet. They make excellent family dogs as well and like how they were displayed in Lassie, they are really very smart dogs which does make them easy to train. For me, their highlight is just how adaptable they are, which means they fit in with most household arrangements and sizes and can tolerate changes in different noises, uh, chaos, energy levels, separation. All these things make them very adaptable. However, their main downside is again those grooming requirements, which are often multiple times a day, especially if you do want to keep up those extreme royal looks. At number six, I have the Staffordshire Bull Terrier. And if you've seen any of my other videos involving the Staffordshire, you will know that I am a major promoter of the breed. I honestly think they may be one of the most versatile dogs in the planet, and is probably my number one recommended breeds when I give you guys one-to-one -one advice through consultations or emails. This is because they are truly amazing all-round dogs. They can be outgoing and active when you want to go for a long walk or a day at the beach, but they can also be excellent cuddle companions if you just want to chill on the sofa and binge some Netflix. They're incredibly adaptable and very easy to train and despite popular belief they are not aggressive or dangerous dogs at all and that's a myth that I will fight to abolish every day. When owned by responsible owners they thrive as gentle, loving, beautiful dogs. My main negative of the breed, as all breeds do have some negatives, is probably just how playful they can be, especially as puppies. This can be great with children and other dogs, but sometimes distracts them when training. So you have to be consistent in getting them to focus when young. But if you do that, they can thrive on obedience worker and one of my absolute favourite dog breeds to work with. And number five, I have the Golden Retriever. Moving into the top five, these dogs could arguably take the number one spot and choosing between them was so tough that I let my heart take over from my head. And at number five, I gave the spot to the Golden Retriever. Another king of the all-round dogs who will thrive just as much in the field hunting as they will in the garden playing fetch with the kids. They love to please, which makes training a breeze. And they seem to come out of their mother's womb with just a bit more love in their hearts than most other breeds, which makes them form such deep, loving bonds with their families, and they'll be incredibly friendly to everyone they meet. The downside for me is those longer coats, as again, that requires more grooming than shorter hair breeds, but other than that, I'd be nitpicking to find any more real negatives to talk about the uh, Golden Retriever. At number four, we have the Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. And they are possibly one of the cutest dogs in the entire world and probably my number one pick for first time owners. Not a bad sell in their bodies, these dogs are the epitome of just love and cuddles. And cuddles is all they will want to do. They adore their families and just want to be with them at all times. They're great with other animals and easy to train the basics when you really can't go wrong with the Cavalier. For many families, they may well be the number one pick. For me, I have them a little bit lower on my list as being so much smaller, they're just not quite as robust, which can cause issues with clumsy kids. And I'm personally more of an advocate for getting out and working your dogs and playing with them all day and then cuddling with them at night. And the Cavalier would just rather cuddle 24 seven. So that is kind of my bias fully taking over here. And that is what's denying them a medal spot. But for many people, that could be exactly what you're looking for. And talking of medals, we have our bronze medal spot and taking it is the Newfoundland. Think a bigger version of the Golden Retriever that has gone to university to study a master's degree in loving children. That is exactly what you get with a Newfoundland. They are the real super nanny of the dog world and I would genuinely trust a well-trained Newfoundland with my children over the vast majority of humans. I can't stress enough just how brilliant they are with kids of all ages. The downsides are again their coats. 
being longer and as they are big dogs accidents can happen even with just a friendly wag of the tail clotheslining a passing two-year-old by accident these are just things that you need to take care of when we're talking of bigger dogs and talking of bigger dogs and taking my silver spot and purely my personal bias but i do honestly believe it to be true is the gentle giant the english mastiff of all the giant breeds they are undoubtedly have the best temperament being incredibly loyal loving and gentle they are super patient and relaxed and everything is done in its own sweet time with this breed they absolutely adore children and their families and they are so robust it's almost comical it should never be encouraged but the amount of stories i get from emails from you guys and owners with funny stories of how chilled they are but when clumsy toddlers are doing crazy things with them it, it does make me laugh out loud and warms my heart i'm planning a new series soon documenting me choosing my next family guard dog and just for a quick sneak peek the english mastiff is one of the three finalists that the series will start with me choosing between and on that topic this list was about purely great family dogs but their intimidating stature and need to protect their loved ones does make them great watchdogs as well i understand some people might have a breed like this higher on their list or not on the list at all and i wouldn't argue much either way but my personal choice there was no way they were being left out of a medal spot here as i truly think they are one of the best family dogs in the world if you can manage their sheer size and that slobber now before i tell you about my number one pick for the best family dog on the planet again don't make sure you don't forget to check out our fenrir canineproducts.com where you can get our wild dog food range 25 percent off your first order 10 percent off every order after that and free shipping on every single order but taking our gold medal spot in the number one position is the labrador so the king of the world when it comes to family dogs is undoubtedly the labrador and for good reason they are simply the best family dog on the planet no questions asked and is the reason that i bought one into my family they tick every single box and do it all just a bit better than every other breed does it there's a reason they are the most commonly used family dogs in the entire world as well as the most common assistants and working dogs now you can click top or bottom left to see another one of my videos if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you never miss another episode of the canine show